I'm almost going to give him a second from what he practiced at. So, yeah, very good lap right there by Reed Sorensen. Here's another guy that we'll get a chance to kind of measure the racetrack off of, Marcus Ambrose. He was 24th quickest, and let's just see what he can do out of the Michael Walter Racing Stables and his Toyota. Three Toyotas atop the speed charts right now, led by Brian Vickers, Kyle Busch, and David Rudiman. Yeah, we've only had four Toyotas qualified. The top three you mentioned, and then Robbie Gordon right now, 20th. And Larry, what's impressing me is the guys that go in and they, they lose a little bit, enter the corner, but all of a sudden you see that, that marker starting to kind of like come back toward that pole position. That's when you know you're gaining speed off these corners, which is so important. And that's just exactly what you see happening with that 47 car. Big time in three and four. Gave up a little bit getting in, but bought a lot more back on the exit. And Marcos is going to be fourth quickest. That's four Toyotas at the top Good of the job, charts. Bud. That's P5. Second, Juan Pablo Montoya. This is really going to show us, guys, exactly how much speed is in this racetrack. We know it's a fast race car. He knows how to get around here. How much has it slowed down since Mark Martin went out? And he's got a little bit of cloud cover, DJ, but I just don't know if it's enough. We talked yesterday about how he arcs the car in a little more at times in the corner, almost like an open-wheel IndyCar line. Yeah, he really gets his car set well going into the corners. And uh, as we talked about a loose race car, you, you need it to turn in the center, but if you're going to arc it like that, you really have to have some stability there to be able to do that. You can see he's made a pretty good lap here so far best we've seen in a long time anybody getting off turn two and carrying that momentum down the back straightaway. 49-43 is Martin. 49-84 is Earnhardt Jr. That's the front row right now. Oh, losing some time right there between three and four. Yeah, you can see get a little bit loose off of turn three, but the car looks pretty good overall considering the conditions that he's running under right now. I mean, this is a great lap. And he beats Dale Earnhardt Jr. by half a tenth of a second. Guys, that's, a, that's an impressive lap that in is. my book. Yeah. Well, there was still a lot of dust flying up down in turn one as they went down in there. So, uh, And you've sat there and watched that car before you go through there. It, it, it works on your mind. Michael McDowell, only his second NASCAR Sprint Cup Series start. He finished 26th at Martinsville. But he made his NASCAR debut here in what was the Bush Series last November. Started 17th, finished 20th. He was actually 29th quickest earlier in practice at a 29-14. This car yep. is locked into the show. It just walked up the hill big time. It bottomed out. That thing did a little turkey walk right up the track. Now this car is locked into the show based on where David Rudiman brought it in the point standings prior to Rudiman getting out of this car, moving into the 44 to replace the now retired Dale Jarrett in the UPS car. There was some talk of whether the team whether the team could switch points. Whoa, 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 guys, whoa, whoa, oh, whoa. oh, no, oh, my gosh. I have never seen anything like that in my life. He hit that wall a ton. Oh, my gosh. Now, Juan can do an interview, can he? I mean, he just gets right to the point. It's a man in a hurry. Here's what it is, and I got to go now. <laughs> Marcus Ambrose qualified fifth at Las Vegas. He is 20th in the standings with finishes of 17th, 22nd, and 20th. He was well in the top 10 in practice, but I don't think uh, uh, this run is going to support it. I, I, it. It's one of those runs where, you know, you want to roll it in there sometime and get out early, but he didn't get back in it quick enough. The problem. He got out early, but he didn't get back to the gas quick enough. Which is what Mark Martin did a really good job exactly. at. Exactly. 14th out of the 16 cars is qualified. If he doesn't set a new track record, I think he is never totally happy, even if he are sitting on the pole. 19-year-old Joey Logano, sixth driver to qualify. Watching at home, 28-40 is the time to beat. Logano will be followed by Reed Sorensen, Brad Keselowski, Brian Vickers, and David Reagan. 47 cars here for 43 spots. Beautiful weather here in Texas, high today, 80 degrees, nice breeze blowing.
Now, Joey was the fastest Toyota in practice. He was 11th quickest overall. What a great run for this 20 group. And Joey at Talladega finished third. In fact, he had top 10 finishes at both of the Talladega races. Tracker moving up. Now it slides back just a bit, but it looks like a good lap, Larry. It's going to be a good lap for Joey in his third start here. In fact, he's third quickest at a 28.45. So it's Mark Martin, Jimmy Johnson, and Joey Logano. Marcus Ambrose in the Armor All camera, Camry finished 41st in the 500. They had engine trouble, put them behind the wall early. He's had three cup starts here and four in the Nationwide Series, a best start of 12th. Woof, that's flirting with the wall, isn't yep, it? Yep. And we watched him a couple of times in practice, and he was sideways a couple of times off the exit of the corner. So 39.72, not shabby, 11th fastest for Marcus. Let's talk to the man who's second fastest. Here's Matt. Who had a great run in practice, second fastest only to Mark Martin. And coming in here in, as chase material, 11th in Sprint Cup points. Well, the good thing for David is he likes this racetrack. Uh, he drove the truck here a number of times. I don't recall him winning the pole here, but I think he may have. If not, he was on the front row a couple of times. In three appearances in the Cup car, his best start is sixth. But in the five races since Daytona, he, he started four times in the top dozen. Now he ran a 28-48 in practice. If he can just pick up a tenth, uh, he can jump in front of Jeff Gordon. Looked like he, uh, he got through the bumps, Larry, and it upset the car a little bit more than he needed to and maybe help hurt him from getting back to the throttle. But, boy, she jumped there when he got back into three and four. And right now it's pegged to the pole. He's going to be in good shape here. He's going to do it, I think. Yep. 28-34. Yeah, he did. P1, man. P1. Well, Jeff Gordon said it would take a 35 to win the poll, and he just three races remain in our 2009 season. Hard to believe, but it's true. Marco Sambrose said after the season he's going to head back to his native Tasmania with his wife and two daughters and get fizzed up. I may just go with him. Let's go. He's probably going to do some, some gold mining or something back there in his home country. But, you know, Marcus had a good qualifying run here in the spring, qualified 11th, didn't finish that well. But he likes these fast racetracks, and so far today, that car's been pretty quick. On NASCAR Race Hub, he said he's going to drink a few tinnies when he goes back. Is that what a, is like that? A, I think it's a beer. Oh, I, I, tinny, exactly. Like a beer can, is that what that is? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Marcos in practice earlier was 29th quickest. This is going to be just an okay qualifying run. Right now he's 16th quickest at a 28.48. It's a good lap, but it looked like he may have gotten in just a little bit too hard to kind of hurt him on the exit of the corner. The fifth, the, the, the 28 forwarded him. We believed him. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, one thing that David talked about as we watched Kevin Harvick start his qualifying run, you see everybody running one lap. One of the most critical parts of the qualifying lap is getting through three and four coming to take the green. Yeah, you got to leave pit road. Uh, Michael tells me this all the time. You got to leave the end of pit road down here and just go as hard as you can go. You can't be a lackadaisical and just bring her up to speed kind of casually. You got to get after it from the time you leave pit road till you get finished. What'd you think of the, the lap? Like, did you like it? I told him I hate being the guinea pig in qualifying because you never know what the track's going to have in it for grip and coming out for Hoosier rubber with Goodyear tires. So. It was. Uh, it felt like it was a pretty good lap. I didn't hit everything just right, but um, you know, I'm hoping for a top 10 qualifying effort there. We got the worst draw possible in one of the racetracks that's uh, very temperature sensitive. Uh, fortunately, we got a little cloud cover here, so um, we'll see where we end up. All right, Steve. The one thing he said is, you know, I asked him how the time, what he thought of the time. He goes, you know, the one thing about being first, <laughs> you never know where it's going to end up. Yeah, Ralph. He also referenced Hoosier Rubber, the ARCA teams qualifying just before the cut teams. You'll see the ARCA Remax Series race on speed tomorrow at 4 Eastern. But Marcus Ambrose has got a good lap going for his uh, number 47 right. Good enough for second quick. 53-58 for Marcus Ambrose. In the Napa Toyota. Michael has one second row start here, driving for DEI in 2002. 
and comes in here 17th in the standings. By the way, Darrell, that poll you uh, were trying to remember was fall of 2007 for what was then the Bush Series race. Uh, David Rudiman did win the poll. Yeah, I knew he'd been on the poll here. I couldn't remember if it was in the truck or not. But uh, <laughs> how'd you like to be Mikey? Now, he's got to go right out behind his teammate. And Mike says, I got to follow that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I hope some of it rubbed off because Michael was 39th in practice. Of course, the other Michael Walter racing affiliated car, Marcos Ambrose, is 10th right now in the 47 car. This car just doesn't look very happy. Uh, looks to me like he's kind of got his hands full, to tell you the truth. Off the gas a long time in the middle of three and four. And it's not going to be what they were looking for. He's 16th out of the 18 cars. 28-83. Car looked nervous for Waltrip. That's half a second off pole. Really excited about, uh, about having uh, National Guard GED Plus on board. They do some great things for uh, for kids out there, especially those that are looking, you know, who are qualified to get their, their GED. So, um, man, I just feel good about that lap. I hope it holds up. <laughs> <laughs> I believe he likes that lap. I like it. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Marcus Ambrose has four top 20 finish in the six races this season, and he's been top 15 in the last two, 21st in points. Ninth with a 28.53. He was 19th in practice. So he Best pro Chevy was, was really good off the trailer, uh, speed and and it felt good. And then as practice went on, it got slicker and slicker and slicker. And uh, but we were still able to run some decent laps. Uh, not sure we can we can run what we ran in practice, but I think we can get close. All right. Good luck to Martin Truex. He was fourth in practice in that qualifying turn he's speaking about. Wendy Marcos Ambrose coming off a great weekend at Watkins Glen, finished second in the cup race, won the Nationwide Series race, and he has 17th of points. And boys, I would say surpassing many people's expectations for this 2009 season. Yeah, right now he's just trying to complete this qualifying attempt. He winds up 12th quickest, improves on what he practiced at Larry, but going off in turn one again. He had his hands full early on, but he made a good recovery through three and four. You were actually faster on the first lap than you were the second lap. Yeah, surprising, isn't it? It's been that way here, and I'm not sure why. Um, we, we've done that here before, so strange, but it felt good. Don't try to figure it out. They weren't. <laughs> <laughs> what a lap there for Mark for uh, the one Carlton Truex Jr. Marcus Ambrose on the track. Let's see what he can do. Yeah, we'll see. I think the whole key to Martin's success was we saw him early having his dog ride in there. With him on the uh, going to qualifying, I think that's key. He's getting having a dog secrets. on the back of the get some secret. Yeah, yeah, this business is about. You see, the rest of the drivers will have their dog with them next week for qualifying. <laughs> Look what Marcus Ambrose did. Get into turn one and two there. He uh, he was way faster than Martin Truex. But paid the price off the corner. Right now he is on the pole, and uh, certainly Dave, and a lot of drama. Will he be able to get in the chase? Here's Marcos Ambrose, and folks, back in the spring, Marcos Ambrose was very good at Bristol, ran in the top five for much of that race and finished 10th. Yeah, you can see him lose here also, though. He did a pretty decent lap. That's seventh quick at 1564. Yeah, all of these guys yeah, really, really like, loose. especially getting into the corners. And that's the thing, if you're loose on the first lap, it's not likely you're going to be any tighter on the second. Yeah. You overheat those rear tires, and it's just going to be worse. Yeah, you're absolutely not going to be tighter. Been just making one lap runs today. And actually, the other night, you know, Charlotte's just not a place that, that puts a lot of of, of load on my back. I, if I'm on the brakes hard, uh, then yes. Uh, but when we get the car right, don't need a lot of brakes. We had it right the other night. All right, thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Now he needed brakes. He just needed a good brake because he had a fast car in he that lap yeah. shootout. Just uh, this guy's looking good too. Now uh. yeah, Joey Logano last week finished fifth in the sprint showdown. Got the fan vote into the All Star race, and there was. Uh, there was some question this week because they brought two cars to the gas pumps, his and Almondinger's, as to how the decision was. To do it, he'll have to run over 192.3 miles an hour and set an all-time record in qualifying with this new car and also beat his teammate Jimmy Johnson. Car looked good, three turns, one and two. Another good lap going. Not that bad. Fifth overall, first time by. And what we can see there is the lap that Jimmy Johnson put next Saturday.
Yeah, we just we just can't have a car in NASCAR anymore named Butthead. It just it's what? not correct. Can't do it. How about this run? Oh, just lo took a little off it between three and four. He gained it back though. He was stayed in the gas and carried it. I love it. He always calls his uh, he calls his lap coming off turn four all the time. There it is, DW twenty eight thirty nine. He's the quickest at just over a hundred and ninety miles per hour. Here's the Rocket Man on the racetrack, the eight-time uh, Lowe's Motor Speedway pole sitter, Ryan Newman. Set on the pole here back in May, finished second. So this first lap's going to be a little bit off of Jimmy Johnson. No, it's not, not very close. About three-tenths off the pole. Third, old man, third. Matt Kenseth next. His best start here is sixth. Only has one top ten finish in the last eight races. That was fifth at Texas. In fact, he was sixth quickest in that final practice session. And uh, about halfway down the back straightaway, looking pretty decent. Lost a little ground getting off into turn three, which could be a good thing. Maybe that means he picked the throttle up quicker. It was the fastest forward in practice. I believe it's going to do it. It's not going to be a lot, but it's going to be enough. Yes, 27-47. Now we're just within a few hundredths of a track record. Which is 27.405. He's still going. Wow. Faster yet. I'll tell you what, that little number right up there is showing where he's actually a little bit better. And this could be. be. I don't know if it's going to get. Yes. yes. It's a new track record. Dale Earnhardt Jr., Mountain View National Guard Chevy, started outside pole here in 2007. He has seven top 10 and 13 top 15 starts here. Tell you what, he looked pretty good getting down in there, but I don't know if he's be able to get back to the gas quick enough. And one thing while he's making this run, Dick Burden just talked to him, and Lance McGrew will take over next week at Pocono. Lance is looking after Brad Keselowski here this weekend. Tony Erie Jr. is still with Hendrick Motorsports. He has not went anywhere. Him and Lance McGrew are going to swap roles, which Lance McGrew has been doing research and development, plus looking after the 25 car on its partial schedule. The car just wouldn't turn, Larry. I think you higher. In his Hendrick Chevrolet, this could be a pole winning run, and that gap continues to increase. As you look at that number with a white background next to his 24. She's not, she's pegged. Yeah, he's flirting with being lost a little bit late exit of turn four, but I think. Yeah, really, but should be pretty good. <laughs> pretty good. <laughs> pole. <laughs> that and was a little different from last week. <laughs> better than that old boy. <laughs> Another. New track record. Yes, sir. 21st to the 3013. Let's see what Joey can, can do here. Well, these Gibbs cars have always run good at Atlanta. When Bobby Labonte was teammates with Tony Stewart, that's when the, he won all these races here. He was in the Gibbs cars. Ponies won in the car. He's a pretty sporty. Right now, his teammate Kyle Busch is six. Now, Joey was going to race the fall race here last year, but qualifying was rained out. The car he was in did not have enough points and attempts, so he did not get to race in the fall of last year. It looks like right now it's going to be about the slowest of our 32 cars that's qualified, and that's where he's at at a 30-47. Well, and that's eight-tenths off of Mark Martin's lap, eight-tenths of a second. Might pick up a little here. Now, Darrell, you're coming to a racetrack that's, I mean, all these racetracks are fairly new, if not brand new to Lugano. You practiced all in the daytime. Now you're coming out to qualify at night. Yeah, that's got to be different. Well, it, it's part of it, the learning curve that he's going through. You know, he's trying to buy that first lap's going to be your best. If you leave a little air down, if tire down just a little bit, you might have a shot at gaining on the second lap. Kurt Busch has five wins here. Most of all active drivers, equaling Gordon. He's a contender. Boy, he got back in the gas. I know that. He was 11th quickest in practice. He's flirting with the front row right now. He got off the two really good. It might be a little soft off of the turn four there. Second, Second quickest. 15.49. That only lacks about uh, four one hundreds to Logano. 
second lap will be slower. Yeah. Actually, he, he got it all on the first lap there. Good job. <laughs> You'd like Marcus Ambrose in the uh, Kingsford Clorox Toyota making his first Bristol Cup start. Got a career best of fifth at Las Vegas two races ago. I think he'll have a pretty good little lap here. He's a good qualifier. He has uh, two nationwide and four truck series races here under his belt. He is looking pretty solid considering he was 30th quickest in practice. First lap will be 11th quickest for Marcos, 15-4-7. Car's been pretty solid. He got, got a little bit loose on him. He drove in real hard, turn three there. He got a little loose on him. That's going to hurt that lap. Runs a little bit quicker, but he'll stay 11th quickest from a 4.7 to a 15.45. Now, Larry and I watched his car in practice, uh, Kyle here, and he had his hands full. He ran a quick lap, but uh, Larry, what'd you tell me? Maybe when the sun goes down, that it, that it will tighten up a little bit, gain yeah. some grip. Well, most all of the important parts of the racetrack are now in shade. Got through there pretty darn good, I have to say. And he kept the speed up off the corner. Good shape halfway down the back straightaway. Yeah, got to get through three and four, though, if he can hook her in here now. Pole winner at Las Vegas. Oh, he's down on it, but it's going to push up off the corner. Is that killing not his speed? Bad. Uh, it's definitely losing speed. It's yeah, not going it to get there. It got it, Larry. It, it was there until that. Killed him late exit. He's going to be second at a 28-68 right between Ryan Newman and Jeff he, he had it. He uh, started third or qualified third, had to go to the back of the pack because of an engine change and drove it all the way from the back at Infineon to finish third back in June. Well, he's shown that he has the talent and uh, the speed to get around these road courses. He has the know-how. He, he really is. I mean, talk about smooth. I, when I watch him, I, it just doesn't look like he's hustling the car all that much. But then you look at the time or the spots that he makes up when he gets in the race, and he just does an incredible job. And I really think well, this is looking pretty good so far. But he, uh, I, I really think that the lack of qualifying efforts with this car on this racetrack is throwing a lot of these guys a curve. It, you know, they haven't qualified this car here. I just think that there's something that they're trying to do from the old car that they're trying to make happen with this car, and it's really getting them out of shape. Came back up toward Jimmy Johnson. They are entering the bus stop. Has lost it out of turn nine, going the wrong direction. See if he can pick it up as he comes sailing through turn 10 here. Yeah, it's probably not going to be a pole run, but he, it's going to be a good solid run. And as long as he doesn't have any issues in practice, then he's going to have himself a much better starting spot than what he's been used to. That's the thing. He's been starting all these races from the back. If he can start anywhere in the top, inside the top 10, it's going to give him a lot better shot on Sunday. He's got that right here. I think this is going to be a good lap for him when it's all said and done. Yeah, fourth overall for Marcus Ambrose. Good day, mate. Marcus Ambrose on the track. I don't do that well at all. No, you don't. Mate. Quattro Cinco kind of thing going on. Here. I just hope he's not fizzed up again. <laughs> I don't think he's going to be too fizzed up about this first lap because it's by far the slowest of the first lap. In fact, he's about two and a half tenths slower than his teammate Michael Waltrip. But this, there's no question, this has been one of the most pleasant surprises, I think, of 2009. You know, we had Michael Waltrip on our trackside show last night. And you can tell, talking to Michael, the performance of this 47 and David Rudiman is the good news, bad news. You know, it has Michael frustrated. He's happy because his race teams are running good, but he's frustrated because he knows that he has the same equipment, and, and right now the performance is just not what they feel like it should be with him. Tony Stewart is second. Clint Boyer third as Mark Martin heads out to see what he can do. Mark is a six-time pole winner and five-time race winner thus far in 2009. Pretty fast here. Man, he got off turn two really good there. Oh, man. That's the first car that we've seen really not wiggle at any point in time through that entire uh -oh. corner. It's going the wrong way here, though. Can he hold it he off just of turn got four? Off, got out of it a little bit. Oh, soon. here we go. And Mark Martin does it right now. He beats Dale Earnhardt Jr. P1, buddy. P178, you are awesome. Buddy Baker used to show him about racetracks, about getting around them for qualifying, and you could never guess in a hundred years what he did with him, but you'll have to tune in to trackside to hear the answer. Yeah, and I want to ask Martin about his singing. 
So we're going on the commercials. On his commercials. We got a lot of questions to ask those boys. Inquiring minds want to know, or at least people on Twitter want to know. Marcus Ambrose in the Lance Snacks Toyota has never had a top 10 start here, and for a while it looked like, well, it looks like now he could get up on the front row for a bit here. Oops. He ran a 29.47 in practice with this Toyota. You could see it pretty loose late exit of turn four. That's, you just fight here, bottoming out and loose in and loose off. Fourth with a 29.03. We're talking about that while ago. Uh, the, these Earnhardt Ganassi cars, if you remember, Martin Trex Jr. sat on the pole for the Daytona 500. That absolutely is the fastest first lap by almost a tenth of a second. And if you see right here, looks like he's going to back it up on lap two. Yeah. Well, who knows? Maybe they take some of those tums they got a target and send some down to Chad Knauss. Well, if you remember when Tony Stewart and Regan Smith and uh, Paul Menard came off turn four here to uh, see who was going to win the race, yeah. there were two DEI cars that I thought were going to jump all over on smoke. One of them did, just happened to get a little low on the track. This is definitely a pole run for Montoya. 50-89, that's five one-hundredths faster than Sam Hornish. Tell you what, he loves this place. If Marcus Ambrose, Kyle Petty is going to be a threat for the pole. Most definitely. You can hear him come up in here. Right here, you don't even hear Marcus downshift. I don't know what he does. But as he exits turn one here, you talk about Carl. Carl didn't use much of the racetrack. Marcus goes all the way out to the outside of the racetrack. You know, I, I was talking to, to David Rudiman earlier, and Rudiman was talking about how much he's learned from, from Marcus, and that Marcus does stuff and looks at, 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 uh, at David and says, why can't you do it like I do it? David doesn't have near the experience. This guy is going to be a threat. He, he was a threat last year in the 21 car, uh, but he was smooth as silk up through here. I've not seen anybody through here so far that's as smooth as he was. Yeah, he qualified seventh a year ago, driving the 21 car for the Wood Brothers. Finished way back, but had a top 10 run going to late in the race when he got spun out. And, and Larry, watch him right now. He's done such a masterful job at the top end of the course. Now he's coming down through the S's. And a lot of the guys have been really, I mean, very, what I consider radical and abusive with their cars. He looks very smooth. The car looks like it's way under control. Comes through 10. He is definitely on a pole run. So it all boils down to can he get into turn 11 smooth and get it to get the power off like he needs to. And yeah, what's amazing, his time back to turn nine was exactly what Elliot Sadler had run. Two-time Australian V8 Supercar Champion in 2003-2004, and he goes to the top of the chart. Marcus right, Ambrose Bo is first. And he runs down in the minute 16 range, minute 16.918 for Marco. If you can hook, these, these engines have 850 horsepower. If you can hook that up, by the way, they only have that when they're wide open. And so that's what my engine man always told me. You got to get it wide open if you want all the power. And if you can do that here off the corner, you're going to run fast. You must have had the same engine guy I worked with. <laughs> <laughs> he told me the same thing. <laughs> How much horsepower has this motor got anyway? It's got 850 when you hold it wide open. Like Sam Hornish, rookie Joey Logano's made a lot of progress the last three races, as you saw in the graphic. Talladega, his first top 10 finish in the Sprint Cup Series. Now, he overdrove the first turn. Sure I don't know did. if you noticed that or not. He'll be locked up the left front a little bit. That means he got in there a little too hot. He might be able to recover on his second lap. Well, he's second on lap one with a 56. Which is about what Tony Stewart ran on his first lap. Looked a little better through one and two that time. Much smoother, just a little tail happy there off of two, but definitely looking like a pole run. He eased her down into turn three and four, all right. but he's going to reap right the reward up. on the exit of the corner. Yes, Joey Logano, top of the chart with a 44. Here's Mark Martin, the three-time pole winner. Although Mark has not run the fall race here because of running a limited schedule the last couple of years, he has not run this fall race since 2006. I'm betting he hadn't forgotten how to do it, though. Like you said, he was fastest in practice. Gets the rev limiter up the back stretch. He's got a good lap going here. We'll get back to the throttle off of turn four. Very nice. And that will make him the quickest thus far to 1962. That was a good year. Yeah, it's just a little quicker than he ran in practice. Now he's going to try to pick it up the second lap. Yeah, a little wheel spin off of turn two. I don't think he had to get it out of the throttle, but obviously when you don't have that maximum grip, it's costing you time. Yep. And this might be the first car that slows down on that second lap, and it is. But I think you'll probably see this be a semi-conservative, but he really got off turn two. Good, Jeff. You can see the tracker continue to come down all the way down that back straightaway, picked up the throttle, and was able to stay in it. 
All he's got to do, again, Larry, is just get through three and four. Car's plenty fast to get himself in the race. But he is trying really hard to be a top five starter here at the uh, Auto Club Speedway here in Fontana, California. He's trying to land right between those two Hendrick cars. Let's see what he does. Second quickest, 40.07. Ooh. Ends up between Jimmy Johnson and Jeff Gordon. A.J. Allmendinger will start on the front row. What do you think would happen if he'd have been told, just go for it, instead of be conservative? I'd say all stopwatches will be on this car right here because he was the fastest cat in the alley in practice. But he set that time very early in the practice, and he couldn't come back late in the practice and back it up. He was actually two or three tenths slower, so we'll have to see what he can do here. Second in points to Kyle Busch. Winner of three of the last four NASCAR Sprint Cup Series races. Car sliding around an awful lot. You can just see it walking up the racetrack, and uh, you can even look in there and see that he is a very busy man with that steering wheel. The car does not look good at all. It does not look smooth like it's in the racetrack, like it's all on top. Front splitter bouncing around, back end kind of kicking around. He has got his hands full. You can see the splitter bottoming out. And Hang you can on. see right there how loose it is. I mean, this is going to be probably one of the slowest laps he's run about all day. Long. You know what I'd say back at my my ranch in North Carolina? Ride him, cowboy. Well, I know he's glad that 40 sure. seconds is over. And uh, see if this man can back up what he ran in practice. If he can, might be setting in pretty good shape. Ran a 22.86 in practice earlier today. He's had three cup races here and looking for his first top 10 start. Good there. Say he's going to get it. Good there. So far, that's two goods. Sounds good, back in the gas, that's three goods. He eased her down into turn three where he could pick that throttle up. In it. In an A plus. It's there. David Rudiman backs into the lead here, 22.96. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's about a tenth of practice, but so far we've not seen anyone run faster than they ran in practice. Car looks really nice for him. It's uh, not, it's, I haven't seen it sideways yet. Nope. Just nice and smooth. And bad fast. Yeah, get that right. All right, man, good job. Martin on the racetrack, trying to get in a chase and trying to chase a championship in his 27th year. Wow, best first lap we've seen today. 21, 377. See, he's tracking in the green. He's a couple of hundreds up below the pole sitter right now into turn three. Gets out of him back to the gas hard here. You get him to the pole. Okay, here we go. What do you say? Who needs a cloud? Well, he actually got a little bit of one. <laughs> and he's got wow. the fastest time, too. 21 I did, But I did a 40 and a 30. I'm not sure what the real time is. Nice job. Johnson on the racetrack. Yeah, they're standing there like they're talking and not going to pay attention to what Jimmy Johnson <laughs> does. But I can assure you they'll perk up about now when he takes the green flag. Well, he was ninth quickest in practice, the only practice session. Let's see what he can do. He's got to beat a 19.619 second lap to beat Jeff Gordon for the pole. Gee, that's going to be a tall order to beat that lap Jeff Gordon put down. You go out there and really try too hard, then it's going to be easy to, to find yourself losing a tenth, a tenth and a half, and as close as times are, that could be quite a few spots. That would be seventh quickest on that first lap. I really studied Jimmy Johnson in practice. I watched him run lap after lap in race trim, and just, you know, he's like a machine out there, but not able to really lay down this fast lap. And you see right here, it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a decent lap. It's not going to be where he wants to be in qualifying. He picks up just a little bit, but he stays in uh, four Chevrolets. Well, Larry, I was right about one thing. John Andretti's going to be back. He's going to end up 33rd, I think. <laughs> Marcus Ambrose from Australia. Great job at Daytona. Really did, Daryl. there. <laughs> I don't think we mentioned his name all day long, and that's a plus. And that's his best oval track finish in 12 starts in the Sprint Cup Series. Driving for uh, Tad Geschichter and Brad Doherty. I'm telling my brother shot Michael Waltrip, and I tell you, they got some pretty good race cars this year. There's another there's Toyota in the top five. Marco Sambro's fifth quickest. Matt Kenseth becomes the first driver to go ahead. Oh, the ticker falls off pole just a little bit. But he had a strong practice session for the Aussie, trying to make his first Las Vegas Sprint Cup start. Tell you what, he drove it down into turn three and four, and it stuck. He may knock Mark Martin off the pole, I think, by quite a bit here. Pretty good bit. 
How about that? 29-11. He goes to the top of the charts. And it's a new, new track, track record. record. And on track in the RaceSavers.com. Toyota and his first lap is seventh quickest at a 23-23. He's just right there at what he ran in practice and uh, looks like his second lap will actually be about a tenth. Be the norm, about a tenth. Yeah. Ambrose, Oof. our next qualifier, the Bushes Baked Beans. Toyota. He almost baked them down in turn one there. He was the uh, fourth fastest Toyota in practice, 15th overall. But this is the first laps he's had in this car since he slapped the wall in turn four with only about five minutes to go in that final practice session. Tell you what, it's going to be a... Not a bad lap. Real good lap. Ninth quickest for Marcos, 27.65. Well, I would say a lot of unknowns to him going back out there and qualifying this car. Uh, when you can take a car like as wrecked as bad as his was last week and finish 11th with it, getting in this backup car and going out and qualifying is a piece of cake. It. What I've seen that I really like is nothing much phases him. Very resilient. Yes. A little slower on the second lap, but he is the second fastest Toyota. Not a bad lap. Ninth overall. The pole. While you walk us, I will mention the 33 car. Clint Boyer thought he might have had a shot at the pole. He can seventh overall at a 31.425. Still a good lap for Clint. Check this out, guys. Front row, Marcus Ambrose. How about that for Marcos Ambrose? Wow. Yeah, as you said, Andy, I think these guys are benefiting. We heard Jimmy allude to the fact that one and two has a lot of shade on it now, and that they're getting a lot of speed down there right now. We saw Ambrose on the last mile and a half that we run have a great run at Texas a few weeks ago. They ran out of fuel late in the race. But they were up there battling for that race. They had a shot at winning the Texas race for sure. We will ride along with Marcus uh, Saturday night in our coverage. He will actually be our in -road. I might not be able to understand him, but we'll talk to him. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. And if you have a question you'd like to possibly pose to Marcus. Uh, He's using up a little more racetrack. Coming by, he will be a little tires. Maybe give you a shot to have a good second lap. You know, you would that guy right there, Boris said in the 08 car, that Chris Cook, P.J. Jones, Brian Simo, Scott Speed, Brandon Ash, and Ron Fellows. Watching Boris, he just kind of made a nice, big, wide arc right there as he gets ready to come around there and take the green flag. He was third quickest of everybody, all 47 cars earlier, by far the fastest score go home. Pole sitter in 2003, finished sixth here in 2004, his best finish in nine in Finion starts. Now, Kyle Petty talked about when you come up the top of the hill there, how you either cut the corner or kind of miss that curve. He missed the curve there, he missed the curve. Now, this time he basically he straddles it, drove <laughs> right over it. It didn't, it didn't upset the car the way he was able to do it. It's a little bit like what they do there in turn seven. He didn't hit real hard there, but again, very smooth. Look how smooth he is. And look at the tracker right now. He's paying him off dividends because he's taking care of the tires, taking care of his car. He's on a pole run at least coming off of turn seven. See how you get through these S's and down there in the fast turn 10 and the slowest of the corners, turn 11. High speed part of the racetrack. Guys, all I know, if this is a conservative run, I'd hate to see if they pulled a hand grenade and he pulled the pin on that hand grenade that this Doberman likes to carry. That's right. He said that at Watkins Glen a few years ago. I'm like a Doberman with a grenade in my mouth. I'm spectacular. Well, unless he just really messes up here, we know he's definitely going to race on Sunday, and it's going to be a top 10 run for Boris said it looks like. He said he'd be happy with the top 15. He should be elated right Nine. now. Night quick. Everything looks good now. And Marcus Ambrose, he scraped the right side of his car in one of those practice sessions. He's working it pretty good right now through there. He's got his hands full, but looking pretty sporty down that back straightaway, bailing off into turn three there. He had been pretty quick in that practice session. He was 15th quickest, and right now he is flirting with a front row spot. Maybe a couple of tenths off of what Jimmy Johnson ran, and he will be second right now. Exactly a little over two tenths slower than Jimmy Johnson at a 30 46. Good run for Marcos, considering the, the day this team has had. Take time in the Kingsford Camry. He time trialed fifth here. Line and I confused it with something else. I'll do that from time to time. First lap for Ambrose. Pretty good run right here. 
29-43, excuse me, 29-27. He is third fastest, Dick. With Carl Edwards, the new dad, just taking a minute to talk to his car chief, Pierre Cattell. you got a ways to go, not a very fast car during practice. <laughs> Bob said uh, the 88 ran a 69. I said a 29 69. He said no, a 28 69. So we've got to pick up a second and a half from our practice lap. The good thing is conditions are cooled off. I think everyone's going to pick up. Our Aflac Fusion is, um, you know, we had one run in. Uh, in John Andretti's glory may not last but about uh, 38 seconds because Kyle Busch right now. But look, the tracker's kind of going the wrong way. Now it's starting to come back. He lost it right in the middle. But he's going to be in good shape. You can see he's really gaining some ground on the exit of turn four. Yes, he is. And this is going to be down in the 20s, I think. Oh, hey, 38, 18, 188 and a half miles per hour. The Oval Track Cup race and his first NASCAR race at Lowe's Motor Speedway. Uh, Joe Nemechek into the show. We can underestimate the crew chief and the crew that's working on that car, Tony Gibson, and a lot of the guys that came over from DEI last year that worked on that eight car with Mark Martin and Eric Almarola. That's the crew on that 39 car. And that's something I think that Tony Stewart has done such a great job. He has really saturated and pollinated Stewart Haas racing with a lot of good people within the sport. So he learned that from Joe Gibbs. Coach told him hire good people and empower them to do what they do best. Jamie McMurray for Roush Fenway Racing. Reunited with his former crew chief Donnie Wingo. McMurray will be running his seventh Daytona 500. And he is a former July race winner here. Two years ago. And, and you know, Mike, I just feel like we, we have to do a little bit of why here because we've mentioned the word carburetor restrictor plate so many times during this broadcast. Why do we run it here in Talladega? and not anywhere else. Well, we really don't need it anywhere else. The reason we run it here in Talladega, these are the two tracks where the drivers run wide open around these racetracks. They never lift the throttle. And if you didn't have that carburetor restrictor plate to pull the power back, these things at 800 and something horsepower, they'd be running over 210 miles an hour around these two racetracks. When you're that fast and these cars get sideways or start to spin out, they become like an aeroplane and they try to take off. And that's what happened in 1987 at Talladega, which is what has got us to the carburetor restrictor plate with Bobby Allison. Yeah, you're talking about running 210 miles an hour. We ran that with 650 okay. horsepower. That's about what we had yeah. when Bill was uh, sitting on poles here at Talladega, Daytona and Talladega, 212 Talladega, 210 here. We had 650 to 700 horsepower. You've got another 150 horsepower now. So no telling how fast they'd be. They'd Too be fast. They'd be undrivable. <laughs> they'd just be undrivable. Jimmy Mack, 48-25. He is the fourth quickest Ford. That's how you get the fastest out of your race car. Okay, Andy, thank you. Here's Joey Logano. He is the first car to go out. Remember, it's about a lap and three quarters warm up because of where they come onto the racetrack. And now the 19-year-old rookie will take the green flag. Only his second ever start at this racetrack. He struggled here back in the spring, started 34th, finished 32nd. But boy, did he have a nice comeback last week at uh, Lowe's Motor Speedway after an early miscue in the pits. Yeah, he did a great job. And I was talking to Joey earlier, and he was really happy. He said he needs a lot more. Though. He said it makes the week after those race kind of races a lot more fun leading up to the next race. He puts up a nice first lap in 1978. Here, get in, getting into the rev limiter on the back stretch, that's always a good sign. You always, you're listening for that from the pits to see it, how early it hits that chip. And the earlier, the faster he's going. Yeah, and some of these guys will actually use that to get them off of the throttle. Uh, if they, When they hit that chip, uh, they'll actually put a chip in there that will get to maybe the point to where they want to, to get off the groove. And that just hurts your exit all the way back to the start finish line. See, Steve, when we take a look at Joey Logano getting ready to come take the green, as a crew chief, and I'm sure Larry's done it, you get on top of a vantage point, you start breaking this racetrack into segments, and you, you can see as we go through this qualifying, you'll see where guys are really good through one, through two, all the way up to seven, and they'll give it up. So you break the racetrack, and you tell the guys on track, you're good here, you're good here, you need to work over here. And I've seen more people lose, you know, a second or a second and a half through turn 11. Slowest part of the racetrack, but you just can't get in there, make the car rotate, and get back to the throttle and make it work. Tell you what, if Joey Logano hits his marks, based on watching him in practice earlier, 
I look for him to have a pretty decent fall time run. He was 19th quickest. He's running in the Camping World West Series race here tomorrow. Actually ran in one a couple of years ago. Got a little sideways, but didn't really give up a lot of time between turn four and turn seven. And he's a dead on that pole position. See the tracker in the bottom of your screen? And we've been watching it all, all afternoon long. Look, it kind of slipped back here. This is where they're really going to separate the guys who are going to have an opportunity to sit on the pole and not see that car working. It's really watching out a lot right to them corners, but still, he's battling back, carrying three through that part of the course. Let's see what happens in turn 10. We know turn 10 gets the best of them, but he gets through there pretty good. Now, turn 11. Under braking, down shifting, maybe all the way to first gear. Right here, car hug the bottom, see if he can get off the corner. It may not be a pole run, but it's going to be a good qualifier. Run. You heard it right there. I think it spun the rear tires just a little bit. It's going to, that's what's going to hurt him getting back to the start finish line. Nice job, Joey Logano, 19 year old, fifth overall of 20 drivers who have qualified. Here and was sixth in practice. Here's the man who was second in practice, Kevin Harvick. His car is wiggling there, too. It's just those bumps. They carry so much speed down into that uh, first turn. When you hit those bumps down there, same thing we saw last week in Vegas. Uh, that, the bumps are where the tunnel is, right near where the tunnel is. And uh, you get a little bouncy-wouncy there. He looks like he's on a pole run. No, he, lost. he didn't get off turn four. He got into three and through the middle of three and four good, but he lost it coming off turn four. He was a little tail happy coming off four. And it's not much of a difference. He's only four one hundredths off Jimmy Johnson and one one hundred off Kyle Busch. Very tight but qualifying, that, which we anticipated. Enough. Coming up, Robbie Gordon. ...have qualified. Casey Kane is the quickest at a 30-21. Joey had a rough race at Bristol a couple of weeks ago, finished 34th, involved in a wreck very early, and I talked to Joey earlier today. He said, Larry Mack, you haven't lived till you wreck before lap 20 at Bristol and have to run that car for 400-something laps with, a, with pretty much everything torn from it. He said, it is a character-building experience. And I'd like to tell him, welcome to the world of NASCAR, because sooner or later it's going to happen to you, but there is not a worse place that you can just about get yourself banged up than Bristol because you can't get out of the way quick enough. I don't think teammate, his teammate Martin Truex rolls out, started this race from the second row last year. Wiggling that car back and forth down and back straight away, just uh, trying to knock that little bit of shininess off the new tires, but uh, I don't know if you want to take any newness off these tires here. No, they, I don't either, Larry. The only other thing you could be doing is maybe just trying to build a little heat in them, maybe. Uh, coming to get the green. I think sometimes drivers just do that. It's driver comfort. Martin's 20th quickest in that hour and a half practice we had earlier this afternoon. Got a lot of questions about what in the world happened to that car last week at Las Vegas with the left rear axle taken out. Talk to Kevin Mannion, the crew chief. Uh, looks like right now he's going to end up 16th quickest. And that, that hubcap, like we explained on the broadcast, it has three little bolts that holds that hubcap on that holds the axle in. And those bolts were just not tightened prior to the race and just fell off. I had a guy ask me, how come the wheel didn't come off? He said, the axle came out. How come the whole wheel didn't come off? You know? <laughs> I said, well, the axle goes through the hub into the rear end house, and there's a little cap that holds it in place. So hopefully he uh, understood what I was talking about. Looks like Andy Jeffers, have, he's left the premises as far as the flag stand. Yeah. In the right side tires. Don't run any in the left side tires. And that kind of gives it the left sides and the right sides a little different build-up characteristic. Yeah, everywhere else we either run them all four tires or like Martinsville next week, none at all. None at all. Joey Logano has the number 20, position 33rd in owner points. Top 35 is the uh, break point. This cars looks pretty good, I tell you. It's going to be his first cup start at Bristol. It's going to be a pretty good lap, yeah. too. Looks like he's going to be 13th quickest on lap one. Right next to his teammate, Hamlin. He raced in the Nationwide Series race here back last fall. Finished wow. 16th. I think better that's a better, too. I yeah. think it's going to be better. Actually, almost identical laps, lap one and lap two. So faltered, and he wound up 10th in the final standings.
12 career wins already at the young age of 23 and he'll be starting his fifth Daytona 500 next Sunday. And honestly he had the car to beat one year ago in the Daytona 500 his first race weekend for Joe Gibbs Racing uh, ended up finishing fourth came back to to win Talladega in the spring won the July race here. This team was awfully strong at the restrictor plate races last year. And this victory total by Kyle Busch exceeds anybody in NASCAR for its top three national touring series. 21 victories, eight in the cup, a record 10 in nationwide and three in the truck series. And if he, you mentioned he, he finished, I think, 10th in nationwide series points, he didn't even run all the races. No. <laughs> He's going to race in those three series this year. He's going to run a total of nearly 100 races in 2009. Loves to race. Sort of reminds me of the Tennessee Titans though. Not so good in the playoffs. Well, that was last year. It's a whole new year. And they're happy for it. Over there at Joe Gibbs Racing. His teammates, Joey Logano is 14th. Denny Hamlin is 18th. Still the fastest Toyota continues to be rookie Scott Speed who's 12th. Not a real stellar first lap 48 63 although he was all the way up the top of the racetrack with that lap. He's got a chance here to be the fastest Toyota in this field. Yeah I think he will be. Looks to me like he's going to be about. He's going to be in the, in the teens. Time wise uh, could be as good as maybe 11th. And, and there's a lot of anticipation in this qualifying run here because near the end of practice yesterday, they started fighting a little bit of a vibration. Felt like it was something in the engine, and the engine wasn't running right. They found a spark plug wire broke, got out there, made one final run at the end of practice. We almost felt like he may have gotten a little bit of help on that lap, but the car ran great. He was the fastest Toyota in practice, and he's going to be the fastest Toyota so far in qualifying. 48-15. The young driver from Las Vegas, Kyle Busch, 11th overall. Joey Logano. Comes out for his run. He was 35th in practice. This is his first NASCAR race at Darlington in the Sprint Cup Series. Get a little time around this mile on the third racetrack. Uh, of course, no testing this year, even for the rookies. Looks like he's on a pretty good run going off into turn three, but he was down here about a month ago. With Kel Yarbrough, Kel took him around in a two-seater race car just to show him the nuances of this place. And this is going to be a great effort by this 18-year-old rookie. In fact, he's going to be third quickest at a 27.54. And he's the fastest Toyota by a wide margin. And if you look at his practice times, you'd say, where did that come from? That's a, Darlington is just famous for that. Uh, notorious for bowling four tires on, patting the driver on the back and saying, you can do it. I think he's already got the goody out of it, but he definitely out qualifies his two teammates. I've been liking the last like three weeks, I guess. This 20 car has started to look like the 20 car of old. Did last year. Yeah. And you saw him wiggle down here in turn yeah. one. That was not a perfect lap. And there may not, no, nobody may be able to run a perfect lap tonight, but uh, you can see there's still some speed that, uh, to be gained if you get through those bumps a little better than he did. Jimmy Johnson. In Cobalt Tools entry from Hendrick Motorsports. These guys were not really all that great in practice. Uh, I think he ended up 14, 15, somewhere back in there. Uh, and never really had a fast, what I'd call a fast lap. He really ran just a little quicker Oop. than Kyle Busch did in practice. And you know, Larry, I'm surprised. I think people came here thinking that the tires were going to be like they were last week. Apparently they're not because these guys are talking about they're slipping and sliding a lot. Tire may be. I don't think this old racetrack is. This yeah. old surface really is, is starting to deteriorate. It's about 12 years old. Boy, he snuck it in there at the last minute. Got a good run off turn four. He beats Kyle Busch by three one hundreds. I think I heard him say it was bottoming out or drag. Yeah, you can see sparks flying. Looks like he thinks there's a little speed left in this car, but I'd, I'd be surprised. You really have to, I think, have to flub up the first lap before you're going to run faster well, than the second one. I think, Larry, what he would see, he, he got a little sideways down there in turn one, like a lot like what Kyle Busch did. Well, he only falls off six one hundredths. 
Knights. It's 11 drivers to win the All-Star race after transferring from the showdown. He has called me and texted me and emailed me for two days about, be sure and tell everybody to vote for Mikey. Vote for Mikey. Get me in that race. So, bro, I'm doing my part. You're going to have to do the rest. <laughs> what have we always said? <laughs> you do a little, we'll do the rest, right? Right. He and uh, Ryan Newman were the two drivers to transfer from the showdown and go on and win the all-star race. Michael did it in 1996, Ryan Newman in 2002. I that think. was Ryan's rookie season. I think Mikey says one and done. That's all I'm going to mess with this thing. Oh, uh, man. Matt Kenseth has had the most incredible season in two different ways, winning the <laughs> Daytona 500, winning the first two races, and then last week on the sixth lap of the race, it all came undone. And his day was done. He was the first from being first to finish. He was first car out. And we had that shot of that tractor and trailer leaving about yep. the halfway point of the race. Of course, you look at the two races he won. That was absolutely the last tractor and trailer to leave the racetrack after post-race inspection. Boy, he just could not get the thing. Playing with the throttle, uh -huh. just couldn't get it back to the, couldn't get it wide open. He's back there in Matt Kenseth qualifying land right yeah. now. If he qualifies 25th, I'd say watch out. 24th. The last three to keep you up to date on all of this as we go through the afternoon. It's a beautiful day in Daytona Beach. It is warm and sunny. A uh, few big clouds starting to drift in the area of the speedway, but right now over the track, it's a cloudless sky as Jeff Gordon, DuPont Chevrolet, is the first driver to take time. And, and it's kind of interesting. Where did he draw for the Bud shootout? Last. Or did he draw to qualify today? First. So, I mean, you know, his drawing is he's improved, I think, his drawing skills anyway. Gordon was 22nd in practice for pull runs. This will be his 17th Daytona 500. Now, you heard us talking about this carburetor restrictor plate that pulls the horsepower back, keeps these cars qualifying somewhere in the high 180s. And because of that, it takes a while to get these cars wound up. That's the reason on the first lap, you saw Jeff Gordon pretty much running right up against the wall. The longest distance around this two and a half mile racetrack. But now that we're on the money lap, everybody will run quicker on their second lap. You see he drops right to the bottom, the shortest distance around this track. Just think about when you're a kid, you tie a rock on a string. And you know, you get her way out there and get her wound up and then you could kind of pull her in and uh, really make some time with it. So that's what you try to do with these cars. Garden has won more restrictor plate races than anyone else in this field. 12. 48.025 seconds, 187.4 miles per hour. Now here's Junior, and he was he was real quick in practice and real happy with his car. Let's see if he can uh, back up his practice speed. He ended up 15th quickest when it was all set up, but you're right. Uh, we heard him say he was pretty happy with that 88 car. Way up the hill off the of two there. Didn't get off of, of the, the bottom of turn two like I know he would like to. Let's see what he does here on his lap. It's not going to be what he's looking for on lap one. In fact, he's going to be third quickest of the three cars, 1577. She's coming around this time. He, got off. he was just high up in the middle of uh, one and two that first time by. Let's see if he uh, can pick it up a little bit. Should be able to. Looked a little better. A lot better. Uh, more than a tenth better. 1563. Thanks, Chris. Two more cars, and then we move into knockout qualifying. Here is a driver who we thought would be a threat for the pole based on practice speeds, Kurt Busch. I was going to say, this is another one to pull your stopwatch out on, but there's a lot of work to do as he's about halfway down the back straightaway. Don't pick up quite a bit of speed down that back straightaway when you run that high line, but you're going to lose a lot of time. You're going to pick up speed. But you're going to lose time, and he's up high even in three and four. He just either doesn't want to be on the bottom or he can't get the car to the bottom. It's going to be wow. a good run, though. What a How about second quickest for Kurt Busch? 29.74, just one-tenth off of Mark Martin. He doesn't want to be on the bottom. <laughs> no. Hey there, Kurt. P2. P2. Good job, man. Good job, Pat Trison. Yeah. <laughs> Tell him yeah, that's thanks. enough. This thing's out of control. <laughs> Real loose. Johnny Sauter and the Haas Automation Chevrolet finished sixth in the All-Star Race last year after finishing second in the showdown. Well, here's a guy to test on, I guarantee you, and that's a flagman there. Didn't look like a flagman. 
He's getting a little help from out of the uh, grandstand. The flag area. lady. Hey, here comes Sauter right to the top of the chart. Yeah, baby. See how he gets off turn two. Can he hold it? Not yeah, quite. He lost a little bit there. That's all right. He's got Let's one see corner what happens to happens down here in three and four. As long as he doesn't overdrive the corner. Looks like he rolled it in early, and you can see the tracker went the wrong way, starting to come back a little bit. Looked like he lost a lot on the late exit of yeah. turn four. I believe he's a little tight off. Yep, 11th for Sauter. 29 40. He's getting in the corner really good. He's driving in well, but uh, it just looks like it might be a little tight off. Yeah, he was a top five card. Lee got over to, to turn four on that first lap. We just don't see anybody pick up on the second lap. Everybody seems to just get it all in the first one. But as we mentioned last year, Johnny transferred from the showdown and went on to finish six in the All-Star Challenge. It's a great night for him. Falls off on the second lap, so Elliot Sadler has you. <laughs> and I love it. that's what Kale told him at the banquet. All you've done, boys, tied me. <laughs> <laughs> This will be Johnson's eighth Daytona 500. He won it in 2006 and started on the pole for the 500 in 2002 and last year. He and you know, uh, Mike, talking about Kale, I don't believe there was ever a period of time down here when somebody had this place figured out any better than Kale Yarborough did. And that last lap slingshot move he put on pretty much everybody that he got around. He tried, he was going to do it to Donnie in 79, didn't quite work out, but he came back a number of other times and did it and made it stick. And his teammates right now are on the front row. Jeff Gordon's first lap was a 48.55. Mark Martin's a 48-35, and Mike, you know you mentioned he won the 500 in 2006. In his seven Daytona 500 starts, he's only qualified outside the top 10 one time. That sounds pretty smooth to me. That's first a little, lap is little quicker. The second fastest first lap we've seen, just four one hundredths off of Mark Martin's first lap. Actually, in practice, he and Mark were similar in times, uh, 0, 07 to a 17, about a tenth difference. So uh, Chad's usually got a little, a little something left. Let's see what he does here. Right now, he lacks of one one hundredth of a second of snatching the pole from his teammate. Mark Martin, now they're dead even first. You know, yesterday we were, we were seeing about a max 8,200 down the back. Without this big headwind, today we're seeing on up around 8,400. So uh, that tells you how much they've tuned these bad boys up. I'm going to tell you what, Darrell, that thing lost little to no RPM it in did. the middle of the corner. Probably the least of anybody. It didn't bounce and jump all over the place. Didn't Second do it, quickest though. for Jimmy Johnson, 47.